Hey everyone, it's Joe Lines here at Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, we're at the uh, 66th Auto Hockey webinar. And as I've mentioned a couple of times in, in emails going out, um, this is at least for now our last planned scheduled uh, webinar. Um, it doesn't mean we won't have any in the future. It's just after 65 webinars, we're kind of tapped out on topics. And and honestly, I've been, you know, I'm getting busy with stuff. And um, But I, I, I could see definitely, I mean, Jackie and I are still planning to to have regular calls and, and probably do the podcast just like we were. Um, and then if, you know, some, some topic comes up, maybe we'll schedule one, right, and, and get everyone on here. Um, so, yeah. But thank you all for being here and for having attended and watched the past ones. Yeah, it's it's interesting because we did have a few uh, months and, and summer vacations uh, in the beginning. So probably four years ago when we started doing those. Do you think so? I think we've only, I can only remember one month that we actually skipped. Um okay that from memory because i know there was a couple where someone in your family had health issues and you couldn't make it and there was another one i think you were really sick mm -hmm. uh, but then there was one where we both said you know what it's the middle of summer let's just skip it um but that comes to mind that's i think three that i can remember where um well at least two two is it ironically one the one you couldn't make was on GUIs, which is my weakest spot of all um but but yeah uh otherwise uh I, and actually, I remember the other one was the uh, the various ways to connect with programs, if I remember right, uh, because I know in the second one where we got into the ACC library stuff, you helped drive that one. But if I remember correctly, the one before it was, I forget what happened, um, but you couldn't make it. Uh, that's hard to believe. I can remember, hopefully accurately, uh, but I guess yeah, the but thing is. But what do we have? We have, what, mm, four years at least? That would be. 48 webinars and then five years 60. yeah yeah so, so it was five years ago yeah. yeah i'd say five years worth of of doing these um actually let me let me see here because I, I i'm pretty structured in oh that's not there uh, let me bring this over and uh they're of course they're on the website but i don't have them numbered on the website but uh in webinars and i think powerpoint decks because almost for every one We've, we've had yeah back to 2016 and so there so yeah yeah and i know there was there was one before this but i think there was one or two the very first one we did was on that survey that we had conducted um and then the second one we um second one was excel is that sound right yeah, yeah it, maybe it, that would be right yeah maybe that was the third the first one oh no 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 excuse me um, not that everyone cared. So the first one was the survey. The second one was studio, where Mace Ruth, well, that was the first time, you know, you and I neither had really talked to him that much. And then, wow, he wowed us with, you know, using studio. And then I think Excel was after that. But yeah, that was, a. it's been a lot of fun. We've covered a lot of amazing topics. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, and and John just led the um, one a little while ago on objects, which was really good. And then it has I think it'll be released tomorrow morning. Um, over the weekend, Jean did a little tutorial with uh, a friend of mine, Dylan. He led us on classes, an intro to classes. And so uh, it's an hour long um, intro, very good content, um, lots of good learnings there. That's it was my weakness where I've used classes, and especially with Maestrith, he'll he'll build classes left and right. But um, you know, getting into them, I just haven't had the, felt I had the need, and so we had a, a a good intro with them. So, look for that video. Yeah. Which will be another thing is, um, I don't know if we'll you know we'll do webinars like this or just have you know specific guests on and and do some training on a very specific thing, um, and and you know a deep dive into stuff because that is where I think. In other video, you know, doing stuff in videos is very helpful. Uh, you can learn a lot. But um, just talking like we've been doing, helping people, uh, I, some people replied back and just said the webinars, you know, the currently right now, especially without a topic, and we just help people. It's just random if it's going to help them or not. And so it, it's not as easy because, you know, they don't know if, what to attend and if it's going to help them or not. Um, and we've already done almost everything we could think of. 
So yeah, and, and and sipping to through two hours of webinar, right? If if something will help you or not, that that's also a lot to ask. So yeah. absolutely, yeah, good point. So let's go ahead and get uh, moving forward. I do have something here, and then we can start um, talking uh, in general. So again, the one hundred twenty, and this all happened by the way because the the series was due to expire on this one, and then I was going to have to create a whole new meeting invite and all of a sudden i'm like you know what maybe we should just stop so um yeah today will be the last one of that series uh and then we had uh, a couple good podcasts the other day um let me copy and paste all these in here into the chat the um and actually at the bottom if i remember right on the bottom of that screen i i ask you you know are you talking to other people yeah about your coding and you should be and um, just again, and, and this has happened multiple times. Just the other day, John was demonstrating this new tool he's working on with me. And it's just a critical thing to say is talk to other people about what you're doing. And often, you know, they'll either help you solve it or just help you think about things you hadn't thought about, right? Um, and, and it's just amazing how helpful it is to verbalize what you're working on to someone else. If they're an auto hotkey, you know, even though they know anything or little or a lot, it's helpful, but even if they don't know anything, it can be very helpful. Because uh, even when the example where John was helping me work on this thing with push bullet, where I would close it and it would minimize, but to the system tray, not to the you know, your taskbar, I couldn't get it to come back up easily. And when I was vocalizing to it, I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have to close it. I can just literally minimize the screen, you know, the, the window, instead of closing it, which did it um but it was that vocalization that really helped me help my like me solve it what's that it's like with psychiatrics they don't have to talk they just listen to you and you you find right. your your solution yourself <laughs> yeah so so i've i've taken a picture of john now and i just put it up here and i just pretend to talk to him <laughs> <laughs> um all right so let's let's go ahead and um Oh, by the way, and actually, Jackie, that I think it'd be a fun, but that the whole, you know, version two, I'm curious people here who, if anyone is switching to it and has used it, um, I know, uh, which actually, Dimitri, I don't think I've seen him here yet. He's been doing a lot of stuff in it, obviously, but um, it, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. And, uh, but definitely I would say is the bare minimum, you know, hey, really start considering putting in which version of auto hockey your script is supposed to run with. a good thing in the long run. Uh, and then this one on the programming as Anita rises was an interesting or learning, you know, should you learn all a bunch of stuff up front or should you learn more just as you need to, right? And that's where kind of everyone for the most part has become like YouTube mechanics, you heard the phrase, right? Why learn, go to college to be a mechanic and learn all these things when you can just go pop on YouTube and learn exactly what you need to learn in minutes, right? When you need it. Of course, if the internet is down, that's part of the problem. But um, let's go on to the next one. So this is the last in a series of scripts that, that I'm getting ready to release. It's they're all we, we've created a a new Udemy course on it's for noobs, like and it'll be a free course. And so this is another one. Now the, the icon is here. Now I think it's shift control shift F is what I've well, of course it opens over there. I've designated as the hotkey for it. But what's cool is it looks across all of your running scripts and pulls all the hotkeys or hot strings, and I can filter on each one. So I could say, just give me the hotkeys. Um, I can filter on which file I wanna look at, or I can just come over here and type. So if I start typing send, shift, oh, whoa, what happened? You weren't actually in the search field. Okay, so send, shift, it, notice how it's filtering it for me. Um, I could also have typed you know, the uh, alt Q and it would have also looked for them. Mm -hmm. But this is a great way to allow me to see what I have running. And the really cool thing is, Let's say, hey, like actually this one, I, I want to disable because I no longer use this. I can double click and it will pull open your default editor and jump to that line. And it's it's pretty reliable in almost any whatever editor you're using. We've built in some logic to say if it's studio, use studio's com object, if I remember correctly. If it's VS code, they had a way to jump to that line. And then I can't remember if we did it. I think we tried with Notepad++, but there was, I don't think there was a way. So with everything else, it uses page downs, you know, very fast to get to them. But yeah, it's, uh, I think both for, for noobs and for very, very experienced, you know, 
auto hotkey people, it'll be really helpful because I have a lot of hotkeys and hot strings, and it's really hard to remember what hotkeys you know and hot strings you have. Um, you can also come in here to preferences, and here's where you would change that hotkey to bring it up to pull it up. But here, like my button clock window, that's this one right here, which is um, it's it's a you know tool I've been using since Windows XP to replace my start menu button with a clock. But there's no hotkeys or hot strings in this script. If there if it doesn't detect any hotkeys or hot strings, it'll warn you. So I can just turn it off and say, don't scan that. And don't, hey, don't scan my spell check, which has 4,000 hot strings in it, right? Like that that was, um, it actually slowed down the script a bit, but more so I don't care to memorize my hot strings and go find those spell check ones. How do you actually uh, import these uh, ignore files? It, it scans all running files and then they'll be listed and you can just unselect them. And so your scripts have to be run because obviously you, you only work from running scripts, right? So it'll, um, do as you- Does it, does it remember uh, it does. what you had selected last time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe it writes them to an any file um, for you, yeah. Oh, great. And I had a really, it, it was funny, it was, and I, I think I told John, I was, um, the apps key and G, I went to publish this and I noticed there was two apps keys and G and they both said create a gist. And I kept looking at it and looking at it. And then I asked um, Maestri to get on with me and we were troubleshooting it and we got it down to where it was a regular expression and we're looking at it and he's, we got caught up in something else, but we stopped. And what was interesting was the, um, the code was examining looking for the word hot key or hot string on the line. And then if it was there, it would do a certain thing and go look for stuff. Well, in my description, which actually I should show you that, in my, let's double click this. In my description, I had the word hot, hot key, you know, and hot string. I had a hot string here. Well, that's what was breaking the regular expression. Even though it was in the comment, it thought that was a command um, and ended up breaking what I was doing. So it's uh, I've I've fixed it. I don't love the work you know that it was done because I did it, but um, but I fixed it where it it doesn't worry about that anymore. But boy, it was really hard to troubleshoot that one because it was, it was just it was tough. Did anybody have any questions about? Oh oh, that's what I was going to show you was, um, so see this launch auto hockey stream street hockey helper, it's whatever is on the inline code here. So whatever's to the right of what you're launching, that's what it's going to automatically pull in. And so if if you didn't have, like if I was to delete this and reload it, this would be blank. Um, and what was really cool about this tool was I had a couple that were blank and I could double click it and it popped it right open to there. I added my comment, reloaded it, and then they had a label there. Hmm. But yeah, I, I, I view this as like a really helpful tool for people who have a lot of them because some people start off, they go, this is amazing. I'm going to start adding and they add a bunch of either hot keys or hot strings and then they can't remember what their triggers are. <laughs> and, and then they get very frustrated and then they just stop using auto hotkey entirely. Um, and, and so this is to hopefully negate some of that. I think, well, let me check one thing here. When... Let's do with no, nope. Okay, I thought we built a, we start we started working on like a fuzzy match, but I guess it's not in this one, it's in something else. So did anybody have any, uh, sorry for the big blah, 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 uh, but does anyone have anything they wanted to work on or any questions or anything they want help with? I have an, an issue that has been reported from users of quick access pop-up, but it's not related specifically to to quick access pop-up, but you know, quick access pop-up is built with uh, auto sure. key. And some users re report that when hot keys are enabled in, in a quick access pop-up, in their browsers, uh, some letters will be, uh, it will inject some letters with accents in them. So I can show you an example here. And one of these users did a, a good analysis of this, comparing with various Windows version to see where the issue was happening. So the issue, you can see it here, maybe I'll make it larger. You see, you have characters here that are that should not be there, according to this user. 
I don't know from what language he is, but he's not using a, a English keyboard, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this language here maybe is German. That's the menu, uh, one of the menus that he has in the application. So he says that in, um, I look at the beginning of this post, in Firefox, Google Chrome, when quick access pop-up is running and when the, um, the um, hotkeys are enabled, there is this issue. So accents like this and this, with it, it does not insert, are added to the characters. If you disable the, the, the hotkey, as you can do by right-clicking the icon of your script, uh, so if, it is, if it's disabled, there, it does not happen. So I don't think this is an issue that would be specific to, to quick access pop-up because hotkeys are hotkey. The way I do it in, is probably like in any um, other uh, auto hotkey script. Uh, but it seems so that this issue occurs, did not occur with Windows version uh, 19021110, but started to occur starting with this version here, 1155. So I don't know what date it was uh, released. And, um, but for myself, I'm having the most recent version here and I do not have this issue. So it does not happen to everybody. So there's some other uh, context that may make this uh, issue arise. So I'm just mentioning it in, co in case someone see it or hear about it. No. Uh, I will look at the authority forum to see if someone reported a, a similar issue. But uh, it's something that, of course, if you have a script and you have to disable the key of your script, it's not very convenient. So, <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that's something I just wanted to arrive. Maybe it's uh, something specific in Windows that has changed that interfere in some way and only when you are in browsers. So uh, Firefox and Chrome browsers, mm -hmm. I think they use the same engine. Uh, maybe it does not happen in, in Edge. I think Edge is a different uh, engine. I'm not sure of that, but so but, I just wanted to mention this yeah, I mean, issue with Autos script. Edge now uses Chromium. So Edge and Chromium are the same, correct? Okay. But I don't and think Firefox. Firefox 2? Too? Firefox too? I don't believe so. Okay, I could be wrong on that. Okay, not sure. But that is interesting. Now, Jean, I'm curious. It, it, let me guess. The is that user an auto hockey user, or are they just QAP? They're just QAP, I think. Okay. And it's not only one user. If it was one user, sometimes I have issues yeah. reported by one user, and I really don't understand it. And there's something oh, yeah. that you, you cannot control everything or know everything on every user's machine. But uh, having more than one user, I think it maybe is the third. I heard about that a few weeks ago from a user I've, by email. So, I would uh, say uh, I've, uh, I've at least heard the issue on the other hotkey forum before. But I do simply not remember if it was user error or if there actually was a fix for it. So I'd say you could probably dust up some threads on the forum about the issue but i'm not sure they would hold the fix for you i don't remember yeah. jackie do you recall if the issue was also bound to browsers or just the issue in general at least one one of them i do believe it was about chrome i, I don't believe it was tested that thoroughly as you had there but yeah i'm i'm not sure exactly what it ended up being I just remember reading about it. Oh, maybe it's something in my script. Maybe it's something in auto key interfering or, or interacting with Windows that causes that. Um, not sure. So, yeah, well, if we uh, when we have other topics, maybe I'll just do a quick search on the forum to see if I can, if I can find something about that and let you know. You. Yeah, and that was why I was wondering was if he was already an auto hotkey user, it'd be very easy to get him to just you know, do something similar in, in a different, in a different script outside your tool um, to let's first confirm whether it's auto hotkey in general, or maybe it is something yeah. very, I mean, that. And it, yeah. And it tested with older version of <clears throat> so it's not something I changed recently that would cause that it's something that was existing in the older version. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah hard. Sometimes bugs are hard to, to understand. 
Well, back to your point earlier, I get, I get, you know, com- people commenting on stuff on my YouTube channel. And uh, like you said, like I, I've learned to take it with a grain of salt because the vast majority of the time it's user error in doing what they're doing and just, they don't, you know, they did something wrong. And <clears throat> or their configuration is specific because they have a, an antivirus or a malware a protection software that will interfere it's also something like that does anyone else have anything they're working on that's a really interesting problem john i wouldn't begin to think of how to figure out what's going on with it No one's got anything? Nothing? Nothing? I might have something <laughs> for you here. Let me see. Um, meanwhile, uh, I'm trying to think of, I, I could show, let's see some of the other scripts or let me see what I've been working on. Um, I I'm, I'm working on an update to automate my task. So actually, John would, I don't know. Well, it doesn't really matter, but you came on, if I remember correctly, right when I was talking to Jackie about the high DPI issues, um, and not that we need to do it with, with QAP, but, um, Maybe we could just let me let me do that. Let me find an executable just to share it as a good frame of reference, right? If you've never seen it, um, let me share that and we'll move Jackie. Open. Should have something in here that is an executable. Yeah. So here you go to right click it. So if you're having problems, if someone is using a high definition monitor, you can go to properties and then compatibility, and down here, change high DPI, and check this, and I turned on the system enhanced, um, Jean, I don't know if you've done any more testing with it. it, it really seemed very crisp. What was really fascinating was with automate my task, and that's what I was going to demonstrate, was um, I, I'm working on an update to it, is uh, for some reason on that high definition monitor, it lost the bottom like quarter inch of the screen, however you want to have however many pickles that is. Um, but that's how you do it. You'd apply it and then run it, right? So um, I'm going to change that because I'm going to forget I have that on it. Of course, this doesn't have a GUI, so it's, it's irrelevant. But that's what you would do to try to disable the high DPI um, for that program. Is what that was weird? something you think you could set as a parameter in uh, the compiler? The I was... Yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering actually if it was something as a parameter we could pass to it to uh, to do that as well. Um, I I didn't try it, but there's a registry key that you can write so that Windows will know that for this executable, uh, what compatibility setting you want to use. I haven't worked with that much yet. So this is, if you've seen Automate My Task, um, on my computer, some items looked really terrible, the text. And now that actually I want to, uh, maybe just one of us to say, but I don't think so. Uh, but when we we come in, and, and anyway, on a high DPI monitor, this looks crazy. These buttons all get squished. And so that's what we're trying to avoid. The problem is, which is what John and I were talking about, it's like, we don't have high DPI monitors. So testing that is really problematic. Um, so thankfully, I think Dell helped a little bit with John on, on one on QAP and then Dylan, um, he's not here right now, but he, he has a high definition monitor. So he was testing it on his and uh, and sure enough, this bottom part, even though we applied that fix that we mentioned, this part right in here, this didn't show up. It, it was scrunched off the, the GUI. Uh, it was really weird. So I don't know. Uh, you know it doesn't quite fix it. Yeah. What's happening is when you use scaling, because these monitors are so large uh, and the content is so small, so you are scaling to 125 person or 150 person just to make things uh, larger on your screen. And But in, in a window uh, 
of a script or authority script, GUI's element will not necessarily be all scale. Uh, and for example, the, the images will not be scaled, but the buttons will be scaled. And if you have some calculation being done to position your element on your GUI relatively to images or relatively to some information about the width and the height of your GUI and of your uh, controls on the GUI, not everything is reported correctly. So it will make things messy uh, in your GUI easily. Uh, if you do a lot of positioning of element on your on your GUI, so that's uh, yeah that's an issue, and it's mostly fixed when you enable the settings that Joe showed you using System Enhance, except for the images that will not be scaled; they will remain small, but uh, the positioning of things will be will be correct. Um, yeah. So I will have to buy a high definition monitor to debug that or to, to uh, enhance uh, this, this in my apps, um, but I'm not there yet. Doesn't uh, our hotkey have a setting? Like I don't remember DPI scale or something on GUI. No, I, I just think it's a setting when you create a GUI. Yeah, you can I, disable I, it. Yeah. I haven't seen oh, okay. it. There's a there's a variable that will tell you what it, what is the current DPI, and okay. if there is scaling active on the monitor it's running, the active DPI instead of ninety six will be uh, one I don't know one and a half or it will be higher. Okay, so so but if you used or if you turned off the DPI scaling. You would get other issues or it would look too I small? I don't think you would have issues, but the GUI would be so small that users do not want to use small GUIs. Okay, because they're using 4K monitors and have used yeah, so the DPI is, is setting half, to make it longer instead of changing eight, your resolution. Yeah. yeah. Okay, get that. Fair enough. But maybe we can test it on regular monitor using scaling and see what is the effect. So you have an example there, Joe, of what's going wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you scale at so, 125, 150? Uh, no, I think that was the highest, 175, if I remember right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you just so they got the idea of what, you know, what problems come up when you're dealing with GUIs without a hotkey. Yeah. <clears throat> So oh, the, for example, the radio button will be um, higher than their original size, but the positioning is still hard coded to taking into account that the height would be, let's say, 15 pixels. But now it's uh, it's uh, 25 pixels, for example. So they overlap. Mm -hmm. And and this is what in, a, in that video I did with Hellbent, his approach of creating buttons with the GDI library negates all this kind of problem. Right now. Granted, he doesn't have it, uh, a simple way to create like a list view, but um, these are list, this one here, right here is a list view. But uh, it, it would have, if I had built it with that, his tool, I wouldn't have this issue, which would be very nice. Yeah. And Joe, if you uh, enable the setting on this executable, will it be displayed normally? It, um, change the, the compatibility setting on this tool that you were showing us. Yeah, no, and it, that's what I was saying is it, um, hold on, let me uh, let me figure out how I can navigate. Is it, a, is it a, an AHK file or, a, or a Oh yeah, well, I, I gotta, I'll just navigate to the folder and compile. But it's not, it's not compiled. No, but I'll compile it. Okay. Which is, if you're new to this, which I don't think anyone here is, but um, the, the, you know, to me, one of the pure genius things about a hotkey is I can right click and say compile, right? Like um, compile script. And in a second, it compiles, which is just crazy. And now we come back in here and turn this compatibility to okay, and apply, okay. Now let's come back into my system settings. Let's make this, let's do 150 just for fun. And launch this guy. That actually looks pretty good. Uh, but on, oh, and I don't know what, 
it just refreshed, I guess. Is that what you would say? Is it, 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 I don't know why it started off so small, but, um, but on Dylan's, the high DP, DPI monitor, this bottom, this thing did right in here didn't exist. Uh, and you can see that, that that's, that's a function of that DPI. But, um, so it was very prob of like, okay. And then someone chimed in and said, oh, well, you should just be able to do what I'm doing here. And if it looks good, it's fixed. I'm like, but that isn't what happened on his monitor for whatever reason, everything else looked good. It just, the bottom part. Could you try again your wing clipping tool? Because the result looked strange. Sure. Well, it, it, it has a problem with the, when the DPI is on, even though and that's what, what Jackie mentioned, I, I have updated that tool to disable, you know, to adjust for the DPI, but it, it apparently doesn't do it. Um, so I'd have to, I have to get someone who knows what they're doing. Um, I've never looked at it. Um, someone years and years ago, I remember his name, um, said, here's how you do it. And I did it and I swear it fixed it at the time. And, uh, but now it's, uh, I don't think I have, yeah, I can't. Well, let me see here. So control M, let's, let's do all, of, you know, this is my other script that goes across. So there was no way to edit that script, the window snipping tool, but in here I can come in and say edit. So I can jump to it. Um, and you know what, let's, I can zoom out, um, DPI. This, so ROMSEC back in, in 2016, this minus DPI scale, should have taken care of that. And I, and I, I swear it for a while it did, um, but I don't know why it, it, it doesn't seem to work anymore. I think it might be working for your script, but uh, uh, right now you have two different things working for you. You have turned off the compatibility of your own GUI, but you have the scale on, but your screen clipping tool tries to take it into account. Yeah, well, no, like this one doesn't, the studio is not adjusting for the DPI. Um, no, but that DPI, minus DPI scale just has to do with the, the square that you're drawing. Oh, okay. So this is accurate, which we can see, which it was before. If I, I mean, granted, it was years ago, but. I, um, you're saying I have to go into where I'm getting the math behind that and yeah. apply that. Okay. I believe I understand what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. That at least, it at least puts it into the wheelhouse of something I could adjust. You know, I got to do some math and look at it, but I can use the, uh, the, cause the D I can tell if it's a turn on, cause there's a setting, which you were mentioning earlier, right? There's a setting that says is DPI on, or ratio or something, right? The, the dots per inch. Yeah, yeah, that's a variable that has it. Yeah. Is it an A, uh, a underscore variable? Uh, it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just don't remember which it was. Yeah. I thought it was screen DPI something, but I guess not. So, so now I can, oh, actually, I don't think I have a hotkey for it. Do I? No, oh, that was that one. Um, I was gonna say, cause I have that auto hotkey help, which would look up um, another script I was released, but I don't have a hotkey to launch it. And let me get rid of the settings. Uh, again, does anyone have anything they're working on, want help with? I mean, this to me is, it's a fascinating topic um, and it's, because, which is what John and I, why we spent some time on it was more and more monitors. You know, it used to be what a 640 by 480 was a very common thing. And now you know, they're <laughs> much bigger. Um, so it's just going to be a more, more common thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, I've been working on this library for about, apparently, I think it's over two years old now. Cool. And uh, I wouldn't mind showing people. Let's see it. Help is always welcome because, uh, well, I'll tell you, I suppose. Let me see if I can share screen here. 
Um, I don't know if anybody's seen it on the forums, but I have been working on this library for a little close to two years, I think. Yeah, I've seen it, it in yeah. 2019. And it's just been pretty useful in my kind of world where, you know, I have a lot of different objects. If you don't do much object programming, it might not be super helpful for you. But uh, it, it makes certain things in AutoHotKey easier. Um, but there are quite a lot of methods. I think there's, you know, close to, it's probably close to 70 or so. Um, but it does all sorts of different things. Probably the ones I use the most is, is collection type methods too. One weird thing about AutoHotKey is it doesn't really come with like a find this item in the array method. Whereas uh, if you just want to find if something like does one exist anywhere in this array, it'll tell you true or false. And it, it does work with string sensitivity as well. Um, whereas, uh, well, let me see, find index of. Whereas uh, if you're more into the JavaScript world, you probably, or I don't know what other programming languages have index of, but it's a pretty common way to find things in your array. AutoHotKey being one indexed, uh, it, it is a little bit different. But um, this uh, has kind of a similar, most of the names come from Lodash, which I think has like over 150 methods. So if you're ever interested, please feel free to mess around in the source and add them. I think the source code's right here. And it's somewhat organized, I think. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, there would be all, they are, all the methods are in here. And there's, there's obviously you have uh, different methods for working with strings as well. For example, auto hotkey comes with a string or a trim method or a trim function. But uh, this improves upon that by having a trim end that only, you know, trims Meth, uh, uh, characters on the end of a string. How is that different than like trim right? Um, well, the only difference of like trim right and some of those, in fact, it may even use trim right internally. Is it called string trim right? The only difference is that the output var is you know treated more like a one thing that's always an, causes a lot of like uh, kind of makes kind of makes a code a little disjointed as you first have to modify your string and then you can actually start doing something with it like message boxing it or whatever yeah uh, that's particularly apparent with like some of the random methods in AutoHotKey, where you make this variable that you want to do something random with, and then you actually get to use it. Whereas... Uh, now, having things in a function over having to use a command, I, I'm all over, you know, I love functions. Yeah, so it makes it easier because in this example, I've got this array of buttons, uh, just characters. And then we choose a random button, but it kind of takes two lines. You know, you make your random choice and then you actually get to do something with it. Here you would just say, I've got my buttons and I just want to send one of them, right? So just jump right to it. We'll just say. Uh, sample being a, a method for choose, choose some random one of these. And to me, that's a lot easier to think about than, oh, I made this random variable. Now remember to use it and remember to throw it away when we're done. I might go like that or something. 
have you ever played with Maestrith's, boy, that's hard to say in a plural possessive, um, message box function? Is it called notify? No, that's a, a but that's a, actually, he, he Similar, does the same, I think. same approach in that in, in his, well, sorry, above his class, he creates a function using his class. Oh, yes. Right? I, I've it's seen how he does that. And they yeah. coincidentally have the same name. You will know, it, but it's purposely right uh, because it allows you to not have to. You know, it's, here's my my main point is I think you get more people using this if you, they didn't have to use a class. Not so, really my. Okay. Uh, I I can't really concern myself with. No worries. Hey, the, don't worry. I'm being the marketing and developing of it. Yeah. So if someone yeah. wants to, you know, market something, yeah. uh, feel free. Uh, it is open source. Cool. Um, well, but let me just wrap up this example real quick here, which would be, uh, I guess, the, the benefit of, let's just say, an input string. Whoops. Yeah, and it's great having, I'm trying to remember, there's there's a very well-known text um, function, and the, the author starts with an H, if I remember correctly, but I can't remember the name of the the text, um, the actual name of the, the, the function, but it's uh, it's super helpful, and in, in that you said that a lot of auto hockey doesn't have a lot of stuff built into it, which I think is smart, right, because it shouldn't necessarily everything be there. But I saw you had the slice, which I assume was named after like Python slice, is that? Uh, slice being an array slicing tool. Yeah, it works yeah. exact same. Yeah, and and I was always jealous when I was learning Python of like, oh man, I wish AutoHotKey had slice built into it because it's just so handy to, to grab. Yeah, this, Python. so I tried to add a lot of things that is obviously missing from the AutoHotKey world or, you know, you go have to download some function that you mem have to memorize the name of. So, right. yeah, um, and then another, if someone wants to, would be cool is uh, finding some way to, there's a build script in here that, you know, packages, uh, packages all of them up into uh, a uh, Met class. If someone wanted to just change that build script enough to that they're all their own function, it would probably be quite challenging because some of them borrow from each other. But uh, it would be one interesting project. But yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to share. Um, cool. It helps me yeah. a lot. I almost can't imagine playing with AutoHotKey without it anymore. But uh, some people like to do it the old ways of just looping a lot. I think the first thing that it helped me with is not think about loops so much because now I can just jump to whatever item I want in the array. Which at the bare minimum, I would say is a good lesson for everyone to realize is we all have niches and things that we do a lot. Like for me, for a long time, web scraping was, I did all the time. And and so I wrote tools to make that easier. And it's, it's one thing who was like, I was talking to someone about it, but like the whole, I think um, held that, the whole idea of creating tools to help write code, like it, it's really worth your time and most people don't do it, but you really should do it. And like, and that's one of the big reasons what I use QAP for is to store my templates and it helps me be much more productive programming because I don't have to go find, hey, I solved that once back somewhere. Where did I store that and go find it? It's at the tips of my fingers and it's organized in a, in a nice way. So kudos to you for creating your own tool that you you know has what you want in it do you have any kind of insights into how many people might be using it um i do have the primary method that i use for getting because i live in the javascript world npm is very natural choice for delivery according to npm says 255 downloads a month, but I'm not exactly sure how realistic that is because, you know, bots and stuff can download off NPM yeah. as well. Cool. Still a good I number. think I did see a couple, 
like one or two li uh, projects on GitHub that list it as a dependency. So it, it does get out there. And that's always great. Well, and and so here, yeah, here's a good point of, uh, it, it's kind of ironic. We just said, well, hey, we're not doing any more scheduled uh, webinars, but but this might be one also when you say, hey, if, if you're interested, because um, because I also know from from my own experience and from talking to Jackie and Jean and other people, like uh, creating tools and actually Geek Dude, who I saw earlier, um, I don't yeah, see him. He, he logged on very um, early. Um, but like Geek Dude does an amazing amount of work that he doesn't even share, or when he does, he doesn't go about and make it, he's not vocal about it. Because to what you just said too, is we don't have time, right, or bandwidth. But what you could do is come on like with a one-on-one -on -one or maybe just me and Jackie and talk through actually using as examples, you know, five or six of the things. Um, and because I I mean, I'm going to guess after doing the work, I know you do it for yourself, but when you actually have good demos and using it, a lot more people, I think, are more likely to to use it, right, and, and learn from it. Um, and the other thing, which is one of the reasons why that intro to class thing, part of it just made sense to have it with just a couple of us because we didn't want to have too many people asking questions because it's when you're up here presenting and you're doing stuff, it's really hard to stay focused, you know, answer questions, jump back into what you're doing. But we did it as just with, you know, three of us and the stress levels drop, you can have fun, you know, and, and we just edited a little bit to get rid of some stuff where it didn't make sense, but it's just, it's a lot more fun environment. So if you're interested, maybe we could do that on a, on a side thing. Sure. Uh, if you check my signature in, uh, in the forms as well, there's, you know, I've been having fun writing little uh, classes mostly, but kind of just utilities that aren't, aren't really standalone. It's just kind of like, here's a cool thing you could build a whole project around. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind if you need, if you, if you want to, or uh, I am going to have some free time coming up. So I definitely could uh, get on and talk more about it and make YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, and the other thing is it's easy when you, when, especially when you know it, it's, it's, you know, and just having someone ask questions makes it fun. Uh, but yeah, we could, we the could other, the only other thing I would add is this is kind of a big project and it made me have to learn more auto hotkey stuff. I know sure. there's, there's things down there that you've probably never wanted to deal with like bound functions and uh, classes is probably a big step for a lot of people, but it kind of required me to, go down there and mess with all that as well as with some of the limitations of auto hotkey where it's very difficult to tell apart a number from a, a string of numbers things like that yeah and that's um it's another great point of we we learn more when we focus on something and it uh it 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 really almost has to be a goal of let's pick something. Actually, when I was talking with Jean, I said, I had this media player that I, I use and it's very, very simple. I'm like, you know, maybe that I will take as I'm going to adapt it to using a class, create a class and use it. And um, I just need something to focus on to get me to dive into using these things. I get they're valuable and I, I can somewhat use other people's and I've gone through tutorials on creating them myself, but just when I, you know, I haven't, dove deep enough into them where they've stuck in my head and I can easily look at code and it makes sense. So yeah, finding something you care about and that you're going to use because it's part of the most important part is making it relevant to you, right? That makes you much more interested in working through it. Yeah. And I do think in a lot of ways that auto hotkey becomes a personal tool because we've heard from so many people that I have this script, I've made these functions, I've made all of these hot strings and whatnot. So it's hard to get um, one thing that fits all. That's of course right. Um, but yeah, getting something that leans upon other well-used things actually do make quite a lot of sense because if it just becomes a little bit more similar to other stuff you'd be more inclined to either remember it or do it yeah yeah that's a, that's a good point jackie um yeah i have a somewhat similar project just bringing over some of the javascript methods that auto hotkeys array doesn't 
deal with. Um, but most of that is a fork of someone else's work, so I don't want to mm. steal any of their credit. Cool. Does uh, anyone else have anything they're working on or want to help with or want to share? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> which is fine. Yeah. There's no That's problem right. in that. No. Yeah. Which, uh, which, which, which does get back to also why we were like, you know, maybe we've, we've run our course with the webinars and, um, it, it, you know, and the other thing, we under, trust me, we understand it, it takes guts and, and you have to have stuff that's not privileged that, so you can share because, I mean, it's, it's, it's more than just, you know, a simple thing um, uh, to, to, to be able to, to show your code and have everyone's eyes upon it. Um, especially, yeah, yeah. For years, I had stuff that I was doing at work, so I absolutely could not share that. So, yeah, of course. So, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, me too. I just shared it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that why you're not a TI anymore? That's right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They actually, when I was walking out, they, they flagged me down and said, Hey, you need to go take. We understand you have a YouTube channel and you have this, this, this. You need to take this down. I'm like, That's been up there for years. And they're like, We know, but it really shouldn't. I'm like, There's nothing in there. I said, Whatever. I'll take them down. You know, there, there were a couple videos, but I'm like, sure whatever um but yeah it, it is funny i'm like yeah. i probably would have done is just make them private for a year or two then put it back up <laughs> back up yeah <laughs> could have done that yeah now yeah, i'm like you guys the, didn't understand it when i was here <laughs> you know I, I don't think we have to worry that when i leave suddenly you're gonna care um cool well Unless someone has something else or, or wants to, to ask a question on just a topic in general, since we're here, we can. Uh, uh, just could thank you for all these webinars that you've done, Joe and, and Jackie. Uh, it's been really okay. helpful to have these uh, occasion to share uh, the yeah. issues or the findings that we have and all your script that you you show at the beginning of each of these webinars. So it was it was really a great. Uh, opportunity to learn about the Tuatki. Thank you for that to both of you. You bet. Yeah. And, and you know, this is the other thing, and, and I, it was one of the things I mentioned when we just started was talking about your code to somebody else. And, you know, years ago, Jackie and I started talking kind of a random thing. He was helping answer some questions of mine on the forum. And it, it, it really helped me a lot. But it was also, it's been really fun. And Jackie and I just, we have Similar interests in a lot of stuff, but you know, a similar approach. Like, but we've learned. I've learned a ton about Denmark, and he's learned a lot about, especially Texas. And that even though we're all gun nuts, we're not totally crazy. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun doing this stuff, which is also why we're saying it's not the end of what we're doing. It's just, um, yeah, and and we've really met quite a few number of people from the Arahatki community, which really have opened their um, what broaden the horizon on on yeah. who's actually using it and stuff like that so it's been it's been great up until now and i'm totally for as you said joe not because we're not open for doing more webinars or other content but right now we'll we'll take a break on these yeah yeah um to name a few just off the top of my head right there there was that one of the first ones we know the second one was the studio where may Smith just demonstrated using studio and it's really fun watching him or anybody for that matter that really knows what they're doing get into something and it's just it's amazing but then I don't know, what was his name um i i'm blanking on his name the guy that did the neural networks um hmm, yeah from brazil maybe um i don't blanking. remember who it was but i don't remember yeah. his name right now but that was a fascinating uh webinar and i did a one-on-one -on -one with him and it was it was one of the most amazing chats of the, where he was showing me the stuff and it's you know recorded on youtube so you can watch it but yeah, of the yeah. stuff he implemented at work was just so cool and and like you said earlier jackie i think it's a really interesting point of like auto hockey really can be a very it's so dynamic that it is Geo, personal in how we use it, right? We, we do very different things with it. Yeah, Geo, I think he's- Geo, thank you, yes, yeah, yeah. 
yeah it, it it that was a great one and i also was i, I don't remember I think it was geek dude who has had tried to make some stuff with blocks uh, on, on yeah uh, blockly yeah yeah and other different types of stuff that's been shown over the years yeah. and we've also seen people go from uh, I've, the term that popped into my head was from zero to hero but that wasn't actually what i meant but from really new into our hotkey to being quite proficient programmers in our uh, hotkey and people yeah. who have moved on to other things as well so yeah it's been a great ride well, yeah um hot here uh you doing uh auto hockey h Right. And, and I, I don't remember if it was in the webinar. I think it was before the webinar. You and I had a call with him. We were talking to him and uh, he's going through all this stuff. And the webinar was fascinating. Right. But he's going through all this really, really, to me, archaic, advanced stuff. And I'm like, so clearly, I think his name is Eugene. Eugene, you know, you're a programmer. Oh, no, I don't have a background in programming. I'm like, what? You know, and yeah, um, yeah. It, it's just always so funny when you you talk to all these people and um. Yeah, I mean, there was calls with Tank as well, where you're just amazed at the level of knowledge that that people have and granularity. And actually, Jackie, I should have thrown the the image search one that, that you did, where you shared the stuff you created, and looking at the you know shrinking it down and you know optimizing it for the stuff you were doing is is really cool. Um, yeah, and web scraping and API calls and. Excel. I mean, there were so many things we covered that have been. It, it's just um, auto hockey is an amazingly flexible tool. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. it is awesome. Well, thank you all. Um, again, I'll. I'll I'm not. Um, I'm not. Obviously, I've never used the email address for this meeting for anything else. But um, if we do plan another, you know, webinar, I'll. I will reach out to you guys saying, "Hey, it's coming up," and we'll announce it in other ways. But that, that's the only way I use that email. If you're not signed up, I have a newsletter that I I do every week right now. Um, and I plan for the least least the rest of the year, maybe a little bit longer to keep that going. Um, so hopefully you're signed up there and you'll be in, that way you'll see stuff uh, if we plan to do a certain one also. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Yeah. Have a, have a great uh, in the future. evening wherever you are. Take Bye. care.